You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Randy. We have a Swarm City chat, Ethereum up in your retirement account, BitWage gets bank accounts for the European Union, and all this and more in episode 203 here on Wednesday, April 19th, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold down to 1000 Two hundred and eighty-one silvers down to eighteen dollars and thirteen cents. Oil's down to fifty dollars and fifty-eight cents. The uh, Dow Jones is down to twenty thousand four hundred and four points, and the thirty-year Treasury yield is down to two point eight seven four percent. And in the crypto markets, we have Bitcoin up to twelve hundred and seventy dollars. Litecoin is down to eleven dollars and one cent. Ethereum up to fifty-two dollars. Dash is up to seventy-six eighty. Zcash is up to 74.49 and Monero's down to 21.60. Just a reminder that you can tune in to Neocash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. And JJ, I'm really excited because uh, today we're here with Matt Carano. Who is uh, with the the PR? What is it? The PR Hive, Communications Hive, the Communications Hive of the Swarm Project, the Swarm City Project. Yes. Excellent. And uh, he's also a uh, co-star of North Support, which is a, a podcast that you can listen to after you get finished listening to Neo Catch Radio. Right. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Thanks Thank, for joining us, Matt. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So uh, we're definitely going to have time to talk about uh, Swarm City, but first we're going to get a, through a f- couple news stories, and you're free to comment, cool. if you will. Uh, just starting out, Ethereum IRA, diversify your bonds. Ethereum joins Bitcoin as an option for retirement accounts. The creator of Bitcoin IRA come a line of products based on the Ethereum blockchain. Investors can hold real Ethereum in retirement accounts and choose between traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs, 401ks, and more. So that's uh, wow, pretty cool hmm. for some of your family members yeah. that might be like, I don't know what I could do with it. What can I do with this? I'm so out. I mean, that I assume that has some kind of tax benefit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, how would that help? I don't know. So uh, with a traditional IRA, uh, you get money and you don't pay tax on it and you put it away for your retirement. When you take it out, you, then you pay tax on it. So the idea is it can grow without taxes. For a Roth IRA, you get money and you pay taxes on it and you put it in there and you can grow it. And when you take it out, there's no taxes on the growth. So that's that's basically how IRA is working. Four hundred one k's they're all similar. And this would be something that would be funded with Ethereum, then. Yeah, that's right. So okay, cool. So yes, these are actually they're they're held in the. There's already a Bitcoin one that's been going since July of 2016. Yeah. And there are some some rave reviews, but I haven't looked at all the reviews, so there might be you know non rave reviews. By uh, beware, do your own due diligence. Of course, we're not advising you to buy or sell anything. And uh, this one isn't the newest one. Just coming out now is with Ethereum. That's great. So if you feel like Ethereum will do well and you feel like you're already putting money in a 401k with something and you want it to go in crypto instead of this mutual fund of of uh, maybe companies that make missiles that kill people, <laughs> I, I mean, you can consider Ethereum. Yeah, it's definitely a way to diversify your, your funds, yeah. It's quite a long hold strategy. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so definitely check to your uh, talk to your uh, accountant and tax advisor and all those sorts of people because they know better than us what that entails. Moving on, the Ethereum movie has been funded. Now, this is the first time I heard of this when I, when I saw didn't this. Know there was I a didn't movie. know either. So there's an Ethereum movie venture. That's the name of the project or company, whatever you want to call it. And it has sold out its initial coin offering, raising more than $300,000 to film a movie called The Pitts Circus Family. Wow. Okay, so, oh, so it's not like a movie about Vitalik. Or I was going to say, like, no. who plays Vitalik? No, I imagine this venture company is going to continue to, uh, you know, film movies, and that's what they're going to do. And this one is, this particular one is about a a circus family that's, they're all family members who participate in circus, and they, you know. Flips they, and stuff. Flips and stuff, yeah, acrobatics and, and strongman stuff. Oh, so it's not even a, a movie about Ethereum. No, it has nothing that's to do great. with Ethereum. We're it's independent funded. funded so what movies. happens is anybody who owns a token, and they're being traded, of course, <laughs> uh, anyone who owns a token for the next 20 years will be getting some dividend of the profit or some, some piece of the profit. That's cool. So they tokenized the project. I didn't even exactly. realize that that was part so of it. That's cool. So they tokenized basically ownership of the pro- projects mm. through this, this well, ICO. Well, I was really hoping it was a lifetime original movie about the Dow, <laughs> but this this sounds no. almost as cool. But no, actually, that is really neat, and I 
I, I hope it. I hope it's a good movie, and I hope people make a crap load of money. Well, I, I, I obviously can't speak to whether or not it's going to be a good or bad movie, but we will, uh, we'll have to see. And the actual interesting part is, so they raised more than three hundred thousand based on their ICO, but the the actual token has reached a coin cap of one point eight million already on on the markets, and oh, it's being man. Uh, traded on some of the decentralized token oh, exchanges. Oh wow, man. So, <laughs> very interesting. That's crazy. Uh, the last I heard, it was um, uh, 0025, 0.0025 ether for for one of these tokens. So, moving on. Well, the, real quick, just speaking oh, of ICOs, I'll I'll sneak this in right early because it was a quick mention I was going to make. There's something I just read about that I'd heard about before and forgot about. Uh, it's called Cosmos Network, and that's the website. It's basically uh, calling itself the Internet of Blockchains. It was something that had an ICO a few weeks ago. It's a protocol that exists to basically allow interoperability between blockchains so that basically you can trade Bitcoin for Ether without any intermediary or any anything like Shapeshift, and uh, something like this could possibly uh, connect those things. That's what they're saying, at least. But this ICO, they had had a hidden cap of how high they were going to go. They'd done a pre-commitment key where they you know, put out a, a hash of a message. Um, so it wouldn't reveal what the cap was, but anyway, the, the hard cap was sixteen point eight million dollars, and they raised it in twenty eight minutes. Jeez! Wow! So, <laughs> um, people are token what? crazy these days, huh? They are. It's pretty. It's and this like was the... this was on the sixth of the month, so it was a couple weeks ago. But I I just saw it uh, today, and and we'll have a link up, of course, like on neocashradio.com. Cyber boom all over again. What was it? The the, the they had the the dot com boom. Dot com. Yeah. Pets dot com. Remember those commercials? Well, yeah. anyway, this uh, yeah, Cosmos Network. It's definitely worth looking at and seeing what they're doing it looks pretty neat to me just not from an investment standpoint but just what the technology is well one more quick story here it's something i discovered uh, recently uh sia or, or actually it's pronounced sia uh it's it aims to be the backbone of the internet now this is <laughs> something we've talked about many times before um most recently the storage solutions we've talked about have been storage with a j uh then swarm which is part of ethereum and lbry well sia is also on that list saya saya i'm <laughs> terrible at pronouncing this advertising on the platform right now is targeting cloud storage services and they're very aggressively competing with amazon google and microsoft and claiming to offer storage prices as much as 10 times less Within the next six months, they are working on improvements, including video streaming, simple fi- file sharing between SIA users, and partial downloads. So one more blockchain to uh, provide that backbone of storage. There we go. And so moving on, and let's actually take a moment and talk to Matt about Swarm City. Sounds good. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions, or do you want me to just give you the so, uh, overview? What is Swarm City? Well, um, the way I like to look at it is this. Um, So for commerce to happen, you need two things in place, right? You need a communication tool so that buyers and sellers or or service providers and seekers can talk to each other and communicate their needs. And you need a transaction tool. And what Swarm City is, is it's a platform for that to happen in a completely decentralized way with no third party, you know, deciding what transactions can happen or not. Um, or, you know, or extracting value from the transactions by, by providing, um, by providing a sort of a, an, a third party service. So from a practical standpoint, that can be all sorts of different types of, of services, but sort of the, the main one that I think sticks in people's minds is the rideshare aspect to it. Right. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just give oh, you no, a, go, a use case. Right is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. So what will what people will be able to do is um, enter Swarm City. Uh, they would create a user profile, which is basically a private, pri- uh, public private key pair. Um, that's their account. And uh, say they were say they wanted to do you know a ride share, they'd be able to search for or they'd be able to sorry they'd be able to put their request out there in Swarm City for ride share by using a hashtag. So say hashtag need a ride. And then they could put more details into it, like from Bridge Street to Elm Street. And then a, a service provider, a driver, could search for that hashtag in their geolocation. And it could be, you know, they could sort by a mile away or five miles away or 10 miles away, whatever. There'll be a map. And they'll see everybody on that hashtag who's looking for a ride. And, they'll, and they can choose. Oh, yep, I, I'm near Bridge Street. I'll, I, no problem. I can take someone to Elm Street. And, oh, look, seven bucks, sure, I'll do it for that. And, and they can click on it and say, I'll take you. And then the, the driver and, and, uh, and the rider can kind of finish 
communicating, oh, I'm, you know, I'm in a red hat, so you can find me. Um, and then once the, the transaction is complete, once the, the drivers effectively brought the rider to, to their place of business, they can both signal in the app that, uh, that, that the driver took, that the drive took place and everything was good and funds will transfer, se- transfer seamlessly from the, uh, the rider to the driver. So that, that's how it works. That's great. Yeah. Well, and we're, we're going to be talking more with Matt. Uh, we're going to have some bon- a bonus, uh, longer interview with him about Swarm City that will be coming coming up this uh, Friday. But uh, be sure to tune in for that, and you will be posting it on neocashradio.com. But Matt, uh, how does this tie into crypto? How does this tie in with uh, Ethereum? Well, it's built on, you know, with the Ethereum uh, blockchain, so the, the tech is there. And that's what provides the decentralized, trustless system. So all transactions are stored on on the blockchain. And uh, do you, what's the token? Do you have a token associated yeah, with this? Yeah, uh, it's the SWAT, the SWT token. It's a Swarm City token. And yep. is there a website too? Yeah, you can go to swarm.city. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, actually, that's that's where you would log in, create an account and anyway. I did this the other day. I made myself an account, and I, I saw there wasn't much available to do yet. Yeah. Um, it is still in the beginning stages, and uh, the next release of Boardwalk is, is in is expected to have some of these properties. Yep, that's right. On Boardwalk, you'll be able to ask for a service, find a service, and transact that way. Yep. Yep. Nice. What, what else is on the roadmap? I mean, what else is Swarm City kind of looking to do beyond ride sharing? So there's three main releases. The second one, like Darren mentioned, is called uh, Boardwalk, which is it will allow the transactions to happen and to uh, to put the hashtagging communication part in place. But then the third release is called Storefront, and that's where basically any company could could align themselves on Swarm City itself and just provide a little bit more robust detail into specific transactions. So say for ride sharing, for instance, a company could say, oh, we'll provide um, insurance for drivers who use this hashtag or you know, we'll allow drivers to put up their profiles and their license information or their car information, things of that nature. So Storefront will allow people to, like I said, allow businesses to to provide more service, give more information about them on Swarm City. Excellent. And that's the third well, release. Well, be sure to tune out, uh, tune in on Friday for our interview with Matt, and we'll cover more of what's going on with it, and, and we'll definitely ask him some really hard questions. And uh, so, yeah, st- so stay tuned for that, neocashradio.com. Um, Zcash users need to upgrade to version 1.0.8-1. A bug has been found that would allow a specific type of transaction to crash Zcash nodes. A fix is available, and users are advised to upgrade their Zcash D client to version 0.8.1.0.8-1. Uh, uh, I hate the <laughs> version names. Just, I like Boardwalk. I, right, I, I right. say Boardwalk, you know? Like, <laughs> boardwalk 1.4.1. 1. Oh, 1. I know. No, no. Oh, I, I yeah, can't yeah, imagine yeah. coming up with names for these uh, things, no let alone coding it. <laughs> so uh, moving on, more Zcash news. Zcash and Dash is on the Jax iOS wallet platform now. Goodness, Zcash. I didn't know about that one. I knew yep. about Dash. So, well, Dash got approval, too. They were previously on it, and then Apple had them remove it because of Dash, which was weird and didn't really make sense. Now they're both back on. So, yeah. Um, Matt. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask about this. I'd seen you post recently about something called Trellis. Am I, am I saying it right? Yeah, Trellis. Okay. Can you tell us what Trellis is? Well, it's kind of funny because um, it, it actually came from uh, the com- communication hive, uh, sort of the, which is the the hive that I belong to in Swarm City, where we you know produce content and things. We had we we're trying to solve a problem of being. We want to be really transparent with what we're doing. And we also want to move towards a path of decentralization, just like uh, the Dev Hive will do in in uh, Swarm City. Eventually, they'll just be a service provider in the ecosystem that is Swarm City. There won't be any, you know, central oversight at all. It'll just be service providers hanging out, playing in their own sandbox, you know. So we wanted to do the same thing. And one of the ways that we would do that is by managing our projects physically on Trello. So, uh, but Michael, the the system. Um, uh, architect of Swarm City, he came up with the idea of a Trello plugin that would allow people to tokenize the projects on Trello, which basically makes the uh, the need for funding via just a white paper completely moot because now people can fund based on an entire project on a board tokenized. And and so what would end up happening is they could they could write cards. Uh, if you're not familiar with Trello, it's sort of a Kanban type of project management system, but 
it allows you to create tasks with Trello cards and people can individually, investors can, can fund individual cards for this project. Say, oh, that's, uh, you know, they're going to build this thing with this card. Well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll spend $500 to make that happen. That's something that I can, I can view. And then I'll, I'll get reputation tokens for the board too. So I can own part of this, this end project by, wow. by participating in it. And then service providers can say, oh, um, yeah, I'll build that for $500 and they can do that right on, on Trello too. So it's seekers and providers finding themselves on a Trello board project management style. So this could be something where a, a company maybe has a, a, a roadmap of, of projects exactly. they want to have completed. And if things aren't moving along where certain, where consumers want them to be, if they want more focus on uh, something being done here, um, one instance I've seen certainly with like uh, with the Dash treasury is that uh, they wanted uh, masternodes to to be able to use masternodes with with dash that you're holding on a hardware wallet and so i've seen separate funding yep. projects go up basically saying hey we want to get keep key or treasure or, or ledger first and they get funded based on yeah something like that being selected so with trello it sounds like that's a really neat way for uh because i i think even ledger the hardware wallet uses uh Trello to have their sort of public their roadmap being public up on their website, but it doesn't look like they've uh, put that option up yet. Maybe they should. They should. So, and it's a way for us as the communication hives to like say um, companies who align themselves on Swarm City want to hire us to do communications for them. They could, and we can create a Trello project board, and they could fund the things that that they want to see us do. Right. Excellent. Yeah. That, and I really like the idea of the the direct. I want to fund this yep. and that, that sort of accountability instead of the whole fungibility, just a big wad of cash for all of these <laughs> yeah, little details. Right? Like normal I wrote a two page white paper. Thanks right. for the 10 million. Right. That's, I mean, it, if you can have a clever website, yeah, right. right? <laughs> Some good advisors, maybe there's a great Louis CK bit about currency. And he starts talking about how in those old school movies, the cowboy movies, they just come in with a sack of purse, like a purse of yeah. a random, amount of coins and they just ask for a bunch of stuff and just throw this bag up a bag of coins on the desk and or on the bar and they just gladly take it and just keep polishing the glass anyway funny bit <laughs> all right so a couple more news stories uh short ones here a monero transactions are not 100 percent anonymous this is not news to the development team but a recent research paper found more data to prove that at least a fifth of all transactions can be linked in effect connecting the input and output addresses. It should be noted that part of the research team includes an advisor for Zcash, a competitor to Monero. So uh, this has apparently been known by the, the dev team that it's it's part of their, the system, the, the number of mixins they have. And uh, so they use five mixins, and one of the mixins is the correct one. Therefore, 20% right off the bat mm. are subject to a, a guess attack or, I mean, a one in five attack, right? Yeah. So... Um, do you want to talk about uh, Dash's private send, Randy? I do. Uh, so speaking of the Dash treasury, the Dash detail show that Amanda B. Johnson hosts uh, comes on every Wednesday at noon, uh, just a little before ours. Anyway, today's focus is on how Dash's private send feature works under the hood. So uh, we talk a lot about Zcash and Monero that have privacy features built in. Uh, Dash does as well, and it looks like they're looking to make it even easier to use once uh, the evolution uh, release comes out later this year, but uh, Amanda just released a great video today. Uh, I think it's around seven or eight minutes long, if memory serves me correct. But uh, it, yeah, it goes into how the mixing actually works on Dash and how it uh, engages a special feature with masternodes and how it uh, yeah does does coin mixing and it, it's a really fascinating process. And it, so what it solves is if you have a public dash address up somewhere say if you know like uh, accepting donations on your website or if you were just doing commerce and you then wanted to transfer those coins somewhere else but you still wanted to keep them and they just you didn't want to keep them traceable and there's any number of reasons why anyone might want to do that um this private send feature allows you to do that and it's uh, pretty interesting and i think she does a really great job of uh explaining it so we'll have the video uh embedded on our blog today neocashradio.com Thanks, mm -hmm. Randy. Um, moving on, BitWage adds direct deposit options for EU users. With the launch of international bank account numbers, BitWage users in the European Union will be able to have BitWage receive their payroll checks directly. Users can have BitWage convert those funds into any number of different currencies, including Bitcoin. Coupling this with the Ethereum news from earlier, you can pretty much have all of your payout uh, in crypto. 
like in the EU, EU uh, anyway. I, I, America and their the banks, it's just not going to happen. No, it's just not going to. Ha- I don't think America and the banking thing is is feasible. It's just not. And what? Well, let's talk about that for a moment, Randy. Yeah. So, um, Bitfinex, the cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, has been having some trouble recently. They, uh, we reported two weeks ago that they were suing Wells Fargo uh, for for halting their wire transfers. They've since voluntarily dismissed that, uh, so it's no longer in court. And they've since posted uh, just yesterday that uh, beginning April eighteenth, twenty seventeen, all incoming wires to Bitfinex will be blocked and refused by our Taiwan banks. This applies to all fiat currencies at the present time. Cryptocurrency deposits and withdrawals are processing normally, and if you uh, are using Swiss francs or Hong Kong dollars, you can withdraw. But uh, basically, there's a lot of speculation going on on Reddit and a couple other sites that uh, Bitfinex may be on insolvent or on the verge of crashing, like you know the next Mt. Gox and things like that. Um, we'll we'll have some links to the Reddit conversations for people to check out. But what I have seen since is that. Uh, basically, this is coming from Taiwan and U.S. Uh, relations, basically, that there's been anti-money laundering reforms from the U.S. and that the Taiwan banks just have not uh, caught up with all of that. And so there's a lot of trouble basically going on there. There are other exchanges that have since uh, revealed the same thing. So it's not just Bitfinex. Um, scanning through the page trying to find it. Uh, OKCoin.com, mm-hmm. uh, BTCE. And a couple others as well. So they're basically saying they're not able to process direct U.S. dollar withdrawals or deposit yeah. for at least the and, next thirty days. And I think the the, the discussion of being insolvent is is a little bit in uh, premature. Uh, there's no, really no evidence of that yet. Um, they and uh, Bitfinex is doing the responsible thing since they can't make payouts. They're not accepting pay ins. Um, so, sure. so that, I mean, if you can get Bitcoin, if you can sh- somehow move your funds into some other currency and then move them off of Bitfinex, then it's not Mt. Gox. I mean, Mt. Gox, right. you couldn't yeah. remove your Bitcoin. <laughs> right. So, well, there's, there's speculation because Bitfinex and their parent company, uh, have some partnership with Tether. And so there's, there's all kinds of speculation that I was trying to wrap my head around a little bit today, but, but I, I don't begin yeah. to understand it really. But there's speculation that they've been inflating the supply of Tether, which is supposed to be a U.S. dollar and peg. And there was an article that had explicit numbers, like there, there are so many Tether issued. I think that's audible. We know that. That's public knowledge. And uh, I believe what they came out with their report had that they had fewer dollars than the Tether dollars. So... Uh, there, there's some discussion they might have more euros than their tether euros. So maybe in total total assets, they might be fine. But even if that's the case, they're still setting are you, are themselves you talking up about, to Just risk. to be clear, are you talking about tether or are you talking about Bitfinex? Tether. Okay, so you're so saying tether, t- tether itself. Yeah, so tether, um, there was an article that said that, you know, they there's so many tether dollars issued and the tether company or whatever has so many dollars, which is less. Uh, so, but, so but, in order for tether to work, which I I don't really understand, because if you go to the tether website, doesn't it say they don't they don't owe you a a, a withdrawal? Yeah, on, yeah, that's on their, their legal, legal page. Yeah, that's their legal page. It yeah. says uh, tethers are not money and are not monetary instruments. They are also not stored value or currency. There is no contractual right or other right or legal claim against us to redeem to redeem or exchange your tethers for money. We do not guarantee any right of redemption or exchange of tethers by us for money. There is no guarantee against losses when you buy, trade, sell, or right. redeem tethers. So basically, they tether the supply of tether tokens yeah so to the number of dollars in their bank account they were originally on the bo- bitcoin chain and maybe they've also have some token tokens on the ethereum so are I'm they acting sure. as a reserve do they have are you saying they they the, should have an equal amount of dollars yeah, they, they should, should, okay. should be a hundred percent reserve yeah. but you don't you can't refund that's that's my problem here is like yeah. that would make sense if someone could go up to them and say i have twenty thousand tether i'd like twenty thousand dollars please right. then it would make sense then well there's a there's a website where you're supposed to be able to do that but they're not legally contractually obli- obliged to do that. Right. Okay. That's pretty smart if you think about it. No, it is. It sounds like a terrible idea. And I, I mean, it's it's pretty smart on their end. I'm definitely not advising you to buy or sell. I'm definitely not advising you to buy or Tether. sell. 
Yeah, just don't buy it yourself. Just leave it alone. Okay. Right. Um, right. That's the USDT, right? Is when you see it? Yeah. On yeah, the exchanges? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I've been a little hesitant to uh, use uh, bit, uh, the Poliniex price as right. the actual price because if Tether, if something funny happens with Tether and it gets like off the price of a dollar, uh, then the prices on Polenix will be wrong. Well, well, here's the thing with the exchanges, and, and it makes sense in that maybe they would inflate the supply, is that aren't they not actually moving Tether from one account to another inside the exchange? They're just sort of moving a spreadsheet around until you request a withdrawal. Right. I mean, I, I believe they probably hold the funds in some sort of secure manner, but the funds aren't actually moving around whenever someone buys or sells It's them. just they have a bunch of dollars. In theory, and then I'm you... saying that Bitfinex or any exchange oh, okay. isn't holding, isn't moving, you know, X number of tether from your account in their exchange to another person because that would just be too much. That would be too much work, I'm sure. Oh yeah, the yeah. number of accounts that you'd have to manage and move. No, I, I think they they more likely hold it in a number of of uh, increasingly secure deposits, uh, reservoirs of, of that fund, you mm-hmm. know? So like Zcash might have, you know, a couple, couple hundred in the hot and then more in the, the semi cold and then more in the cold, so to speak. But in that sense, because you're not actually moving tether, you don't, you're not restricted by the number of tether, right? Mm. So in that sense, you could inflate tether mm-hmm. on the exchange and it wouldn't actually affect the supply of tether until oh, someone withdraws. Right. All of that, and unless everybody just buys, holds, and then withdraws, then I you'd see. notice. Yeah. So, and it, all of these exchanges could be doing that. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean they pr- could they could all be inflating the supply of any ex- currency. Except, except JJ. Yes. And this is my understanding. You should always audit the code, but Ether Delta, I think, that's an exchange that's on the Ethereum platform, and you can buy and sell tokens on it. And the, the tokens have to be on the Ethereum platform themselves, but. I, I believe that is an exchange with no counterparty risk, which is something I predicted. I, but it's not that extreme. Have you of a used prediction. It yet? Yes, I did use it. What was your experience like? Um, it has very low volume, so uh, I mean, so that's that's not really any take away anything from the technology. It just takes away from the usability of it. It's also a little intimidating as a novice, I would say. Oh yeah, I had to install Chrome and then MetaMask and then you do style. Oh, it was ridiculous. And, yeah. and to get the tokens out, um, I had to get a private key and and uh, do some stuff. I actually used my Ether wallet with a private key and it, it knew the tokens were there. And He had to go to an unmarked van in Tallahassee yeah. <laughs> wow. and uh, well, knock on the window. Well, like I, a long drive. I learned about this my Ether wallet in they say they don't keep the keys, and I, I believed them. At the time, I believed them. I have no reason to doubt them right now. So uh, with Blockchain.info doing their online wallet, you know, they did it the right way. Um, after so many years, I think we can say that. Um, my Ether wallet might be doing it the right way as well. So, Yeah, we actually, I wrote a blog post uh a week and a half ago the, about buying tokens using a decentralized exchange. I used crypto derivatives dot market and um, but u- using my ether wallet as well to um, view the tokens. And yeah. I, anyway, it was a how to article that uh, we, we put up on neocashradio.com to tell you how you uh, if you were interested in that sort of thing, we're not telling you whether or not to sure, buy sure. any particular token, of course. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to learn how to do that specifically with a hardware wallet um, using either a ledger or a, a keep key, uh, we go into that as well. So uh, we'll have a link to that on the blog today as well. Excellent. Well, um, any last thoughts or questions from Matt before we wrap it up? And don't forget, we have the interview with Matt coming out on Friday of this week. Yep talk all about swarm city it's uh, where it's come from where it's going and uh, we can talk a little bit more about trellis maybe uh it, do you mind if i just say one last thing and that's yeah. oh, sure. if um if you're interested in learning more about swarm city you can also join us on our, on our slack um and maybe we can post the slack link yeah in the, put, in the put show notes the is that invite cool? link yeah yeah the invite everybody link. yeah okay sure. we'll do that Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on, Matt. Thank you for having me. And uh, for uh, Neocache Radio, we, we have the show coming out every Wednesday. So tune in to neocacheradio.com. This is JJ. Darren. And Randy. Neocache Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Retweet all the things. <laughs> <laughs>